grab it here. So I thought we'd have a look at um, Almost Professional 2.0. I'll set it up on Amiga Forever 10. And uh, just before we started, just give a little bit of um, background on optional ways to set it up. So just very quickly, one of the optional ways is you find a um, Almost Professional um, GitHub page. Um, there are this is the official one, the top level one, and, and there's lots of copies, and um, then you just um, set up your own emulator and um, map the Amos directory, and then you can, you can run it. Uh, the other option is to actually hunt around on the internet and try and find a pre-configured um, emulation environment. So you, you download a package which contains the emulator and then Amos Professional already installed, um, and, then, and then run that. Personally, I haven't been successful in finding one that actually is is, is current or uh, yeah that I could actually download. So <laughs> didn't have much luck with that. But they, they, they you you can see in forums and stuff that the, those the, they do exist and um, so they must be somewhere. It's just I haven't been able to find. And um, none of the com commentary that I've been um, finding uh, seem to indicate that it's um, configured using Amiga Forever. It seems like it's just uh, other standalone emulators. So one of the things I've noticed with um, the Git, if you download from GitHub or some other pre uh, pre-installed image, or even the ones that are um, already pre-installed in the emulators then um, they're already registered to a specific user uh, so not that that's a big deal since the whole Amos system has been released to the public domain including the source code as you saw in the github uh, but um, it's still there there has been indications uh, when I've been reading and following this that if it's already registered then um, for example uh, doing a hardware a, a hard disk installation of the um, software seems to have this problems this there's even been commentary oh there's some kind of a um, copy protection built into Amos I'm, I'm not sure if it's, if it's copy protection or accidental but, uh, if the software is already registered then um, I, as far as I can tell, the likelihood of getting a successful uh, hard drive installation, either physical or virtual, is is pretty non-existent. Uh, I'll put all the links to all these uh, sites on, in, in the comments, but uh, you could actually buy a um, the Amos archive uh, CD and. Um, I, I'm, ass I'm assuming that these are non-registered um, versions of the software. So just as an indication, it's, uh, one way of getting the, um, other than the method I'm going to show you for getting the um, non-registered uh, pa installation packages. So anyway, let's get started. So uh, I was lucky enough to actually find an archive which contains um, uh, pretty much the whole collection of interest you know, that would be of interest for the installation and um, it's actually hidden under uh, Atari um, as you see from the URL it's, <laughs> it's under the Atari ST domain but uh, so what you should do first though, is you should download this and as I said these are clean copies so they've never never been registered and then you need to um, Extract almost pro underscore pro dot raw. We need we need the files that are on that. So now it's started at Domingo Forever. The first thing to do is to create a machine. So I'll take from the file menu and the option new. And then we um, take the template. I usually use an Omega 500. So oh, let's do some configuration work. So that's the name. I don't need to really care about details or extras. You go directly to configuration. And um, here we need to select. Four. 
I mean, I've tried to, like, analyze as best I can what platform the Amos Professional was running on, and this is the closest that I can come to what it should be. And then compatibility, I say we take the best compatibility, and then I just threw in one megabit of um, uh, fast run. And then we go to the media, and we need two floppy disk drives, and then we need the workbench uh, 2.1. And a hard drive. So it's this one here. Hard drive. And then we create a new one. And we're gonna make a really big disk. <laughs> uh, 50 megabytes. And we leave it as embedded. And then we call it a mouse. Just so that we can identify um, the disk. So and that's done, and that's done. And there we have the um, configuration. And now we can start it up. Oh, now we got the emulator started. So then we see that this is not formatted yet. So it's the hard drive. Uh, just right click uh, format disk. Here we have some options to use, so I have called it Amos Pro. Uh, fast can and not use fast. Just checking my, my notes. So that's what I used, and then we just format it, and then format. <laughs> you watched it. Very much confirming and confirm. So back when this is done. So now we insert into the second disk drive um, from the Amos Pro package the first disk. So that's that one. So here we are. So then we. Click on this one. And then here we actually have this install Amos, which is the one we want to use. Good old days when things took a while to load. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can actually, uh, yeah. I mean, you, you can trick the uh, emulator and say to run at full speed and stuff. But uh, I think for compatibility reasons, I want to run it at stock speeds. And then, I, I've not installed this in any other language than English, so I don't know if it actually works with other languages, but presumably it does. And you see, this is the important screen that you would like to see when you're doing hardware, uh, hard disk installation. Um, that it actually asks for um, this information, because this is an indication that this is not a registered copy. So what did I fake? I could... <coughs> Okay. 
Now, what this will do now is that it will also write information to the workbench disk. So if you want to start this process from the beginning, then you need to actually um, destroy, take a, cl a clean a copy of the workbench. And then you get this, now you get this unique zero registration number. And it's kind of a boot thing that if you use the boot disk again, you can end up directly in Amos Professional. Well, we select OK because we want to install it on the hard drive. So, and for that you need to select Devices, DH0, and then OK. And here it gives you the full list of all the stuff that it's going to install. And so this is this is because there was disks one to six, so this is basically the yeah, the content, and then we say that we want to um, install. And this here, under my experience, that if uh, this either it will fail in disk read, if it's a registered copy, then it will either fail at the end of this disk reading, or immediately when it's starting to write the files, then it will say, oh, you know, disk read error, even if it's a virtual disk. <laughs> That's so just my experience. I can't say what other others have experienced, but um, no, this is the yeah bummer. And then it'll just try and read again, and then it'll be a right error again. So I don't. I don't think we're getting through this. Hmm. It's a bit of a bummer, but anyway, truth be known, I have not been able to get um, it to work on um, Amiga Forever 10. It doesn't matter what, because you have in the play option you can choose between two, two different emulators, 32-bit, 64-bit. I've tried to think and go through the different compatibility options and, and lots of things. and. Yeah, I have not been able to get it past that phase where it says that there's a uh, disk write error. So anyway, moving on. So moving on, and um, so what I did is I switched to FS UAE Amiga emulator, and um, uh, just as a sidetrack, I'm, I'm going to do this on Windows, but I actually was able to do a full installation on Ubuntu Linux, but. Um, I want to do this for this for this video. I'm going to do it on on, on Windows. So. so anyway, this is actually quite um, easy to install. So you go to the download section, and then you have to take two zip files, and these have to be unzipped into the same like level wherever you want to on the hard drive. Let's get that done. So <coughs> just a little bit about the setup. So this is of course where I I put my stuff, but. Um, at least when it comes to the FS UAE, but you basically you put the um, folders parallel with each other, and you can put them anywhere you want. And then the the actual launcher is this executable, so that's the main main control center that you start. And then it actually puts a um, working directory in under the user here. So when you started the launcher, then you get uh, this directory. And here you can set up like a, the, the floppies you want to use. So I've actually what I've done is I've copied the workbench and the Amos, all the Amos disks from the 
that we need from the RAR repository. And um, then there are some other directories to hold the hard drives. And then the kickstart ROM also. I put the um, kickstart um, ROM in here. Oops. And um, the kickstart and workbench I've actually taken from because now I, I have a license, I, I have purchased. Um, Amiga Forever 10, so that means that I have a license to use the um, the embedded um, ROM images and the Kickstart images, yeah, in the games and everything that's included. So I, I uh, so here I put just where you will find the um, the the files in the um, in the uh, Amiga Forever package. So if you want. and of course there's lots of other workbench versions and. So they have, I can recommend Amiga Forever be, be, be from just from the perspective that you actually do. <laughs> you get you get all the ROMs, uh, which are Kickstart images, and then you get all all the different work work and not only the workbench, but you get the extra disks and the install disk and, and all that. So, and even if you run other emulators, then you can just you can um, reuse everything since you have the license. Uh, and then here I just put a short um, uh, list of the Amos Pro um, folders and then how many disks per folder. So I've taken all these um, disks and I put them in here. So now we're in the launcher, and um, this is a slightly different, uh, yeah, quite different from um, Amiga Forever. So. Uh, it's also a bit more, I think, a bit more chaotic. But let's, let's um. So I suggest the first thing we do is we write almost pro here, and then we save it. So then get a starting point for the configuration, and then we can leave the Amiga 500 here, and then this we just ignore these settings. So basically, we don't really do much on this panel, and then we move to the next one. And um, here we say we want to have two drives, and then we want to insert the workbench in the first one, and then we want to put the first disk one of six in that one, and then this has a really understand why they did this but if you want to um, include more um, discs then you actually have to pre-include them before you start the emulator so if you want to switch in the emulator on the on the fly between discs then you actually need to add them too so um, basically I'm going to select all the discs and then open and then as you see you get a list here I, I I actually don't really understand why um, <laughs> you need to do this, but anyway, that's the way it works. Because the first time I tested it, then I just added added the first disk here, and then I didn't have anything here, and then I wasn't able to switch disks on the fly <laughs> while the emulator was running. So uh, we don't need a CD-ROM, and then we have this hard drive here. Ah, this is the thing that when you want to create a hard drive file, um, if you don't use a directory location, then you actually need to go to the icon menu. And then you click on the icon and you get an extra menu, and then you have um, HDF Creator in that menu. So here we have the option to create the um, hard drive. And then it stores it in the um, working directory under the username. And then it single partition hard files, okay. And then we need to remember to change the size to 15. Because these are like 
retro system so actually large is actually not good because um, then you hit you start hitting the limits of what the software can handle in terms of uh, like when the hard drive reports how big it is then the software might the retro software might freak out and say oh, I don't understand this figure <laughs> so I try and keep the uh, hard drive media sizes as small as possible so, and then you see that it's created and then we can close the tool and then we can go back here and here we can select the file that we just created so now we have a hard drive and then we go into here and this is a little bit confusing because if you go home then you theoretically have a drop down here but there's only one option for configuring and then you can actually go to the chip here and um, uh, one can here one can actually configure the kickstarts so take the kickstart ROM that we've already copied like that and then we want to have some more slow RAM it could be fast RAM also but I mean let's make it slow it's just to ensure that it doesn't run out of memory and then we don't need anything else there we don't need any joysticks we don't need any special options and we don't need any additional configurations and then we make sure that we actually save it and now we can start the emulator so now we've <coughs> got the emulator start and this is uh, actually the one annoying feature that I haven't actually looked into if there's a better way but you have to exit the screen um, the emulator screen with alt tab and then it's very quick to grab the mouse pointer so that's uh, and that's slightly irritating <coughs> but we can live with that uh, so then we have to do like we did before oh sorry we need to um, also in this case we need to format the drive so here we go format this appreciate what computing was like and why it's so nice to use new systems <laughs>
to get to the hard drive installation part. And here to have all the disks. exciting even for me because this is actually the first time I'm running this specific process on Windows. Uh, as I described previously, I ran this um, same emulator on Ubuntu and it actually works. And look, this seems to work. So there's something, ah, something different in the disk drive emulation uh, in Amiga, in the emulators the base emulator and plus the ones that you can select in, in play, 32-bit, 64-bit. So there seems to be no difference, so it's the same uh, disk emulation. So something in the disk emulation. And since it was giving an error on writing files, then that, that means that it's something in the hard drive emulation that's not, um, I wouldn't say, yeah. Of course, from this software's perspective, then there's something that's not correct. But, um, yeah, seems to work fine. And it worked fine on the um, on Ubuntu uh, Linux also. If anybody wants to see a video about installing it on Ubuntu, setup process and, and the installation that let me know. I, I don't right now intend to make a video of, of the installation on Ubuntu. And um, basically ignoring the fact that the basic setup then then this whole procedure of course is, is going to be you, the um, launcher is exactly the same and, and, and the of course using almost installer is exactly the same. So now we need to swap disks, and on Ubuntu it was that you need to press F12, yep, that's the same, and let's see, and then we should have more disks here, yes, okay, so we, got to, we had to select it to get, and then it's to oh, the text is not very good. But it, it must be that one. That's the only one with two in the name. So. so F12, and then you need to actually click on the second row, or press enter on the second row, and then you get to the main list. And it says you don't, won't see that list if you don't have it in the in the um, list of disks that you want to use run runtime uh, in um, Amiga Forever, you 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 just uh, select a disk from the disk drive, so you don't have to pre, -de pre you don't have to pre decide what disk you're going to swap. And you know why why they have it that way? I don't really know. Anyway, so I'm, this is basically just the, an operation of um, uh, yeah inserting each disk and, and getting them installed. So I'll, I'll be back when, because there is a phase where you need to um, select the utility disk again. So I'll, I'll be back just for that section. But otherwise, I think I'll, I'll see you then. So I'll cycle through the disks. And then the last thing it also is to go back to um, the accessories disk. And in the 
numbering sequence, it's number this number four. Installation complete. And now we um, select quit. And this is the little bit of an illogicality here. So now this uh, the installation program so that you can exit to the workbench is going to ask you to remove the disk. So that's F12. F So it's <laughs> it's um, somehow picked up that I'm uh, I have not using Swedish language in Windows, but I have a Swedish region setting. So that's why it says Mata ut, which means take the you know take the disk out. <laughs> I was wondering what what the, what is that saying? I didn't even realize myself before I actually started looking. Okay, but anyway, it's to remove the disk. And then we need to take the other one out also. So both discs need to be out. So there we go. Okay, and now you get back to the work match. And um I had some comments here. all this windows so and then we open up the hard drive and then we open up almost pro okay, and then we resize this window so we can actually see what it contains and then it was an option Window cleanup. There's a window cleanup. There. So now you. I just wanted to show that everything's installed. Um, so now we're done with that. So now we can just um, close the emulator. And that's the typical Amiga style. There's no shutdown or anything. It's just to. Uh, by emulator. So what I usually do is that since this is one phase that's being completed and the hard drive's been updated that you can actually go into the um, working directory hard drives and then we can actually just take a copy of this one and we can paste it. So now we have a backup copy of, um, of the um, first phase. So if anything gets messed up, then you can just restore that drive and, and, and um, continue. So before we start the emulator to continue then, I heavily suggest that we um, take out the installation floppy before we start the emulator. And then we can start the emulator. So now it'll just do workbench and stuff. So won't get the uh, won't giving you double Amos sort of stuff. So now we got it started. And then we have the Amos Pro. Directory. 
and then we have an actual Amos Pro here. So this is like the hard drive installed Amos Pro. So you can just see if it'll start. So as you see that now it starts and now this is a registered copy so it's under the name that I created. So um is there anything else to check? Let's see. And then the version number is one point zero zero as intended right now. Yeah, and then this is now in the 1.00 version, so when we exit here, it'll lock up the workbench. So that's nothing to worry about. So that's just the fe <laughs> feature of the first version of AMOS. So now we just close the emulator. Oh, we actually saw that it was. Um, it, it starts off it's registered under our name, under the name we created, and it's version 1.00, which it's supposed to. Be. So the next thing is we're going to start upgrading the um, the version. And um, the first thing to do is to uh, let's say insert. <sighs> what was it called? This one here. So we want to go um, have this professional, so we're going to upgrade it to 1.12 now. And then we just, um, yeah, we insert the disk and then we start. So now we have the Amos Pro update on the screen and then we just double click on it. And then here we have Amos Pro update. And this says version 1.1, but it's like, uh, yeah, I mean the disk is called 1.12, so I don't know, ah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I've been running this before, so. And then here you get a few options, like you, because in those days you could run everything from the floppy disk drive, so it was a luxury to have a hard drive. <laughs> and then update Amos Pro installed on hard drive is the one option we want to take. And then ask what device do we want to install it on, and it's that one. And then um, what it wants us to select, if you look up, here it's to select your current Amos Pro, locate and select the file called Amos Pro. So it wants to have the Amos Pro config file. So that's here. So it's that file you need to select. So, let's take a little while to copy all the files and stuff. So, that's that. So now we have the version upgraded to 1.12. So I'm just going to take quick the updater. And we get back to the desk. Well, now we're going to, uh, or I'm going to close the emulator. And then I'm going to um, back up the hard drive file again. So now we need to swap to a new disk. So this is where we update the system to 2.0. And wait, just checking my note. So this is disk actually uh, in this update set. It's disk three. Very illogical, but uh, remember disk three. And then we just start the emulator again. So, start it again so it looks the same. And um, let me just take the update here. And as you see, this is to upgrade almost to 
comes to off grid on the hard drive. <coughs> Select the config file. And then it will do its stuff. So oh, that seems to have completed okay. And we quit the updater. So now I'm going to again I'm going to close the emulator back up the hard drive file. So back to the configuration. And then we need to swap disks. And in this case, we need to take the 2.0 update to disk 1. And then we start the emulator again. So, this is the last and final, because what we've been do doing now is we installed 1.0, uh, upgraded to 1.12, and then upgraded it to 2.0. And that was the basic AMOS implementation. And now we can actually add the, comp uh, the 2.0 compiler to the, to the setup. As you see, the compiler can be installed to a floppy disk setup or to um, a hard drive setup. So this is going to ask a few questions. Do you have the AMOS Professional? Yep. Do you have a hard drive? Yes, we do. And have we updated the AMOS Professional to the 2.0 version? Yes, we have. So this is unexpected, but I wanted to show it anyway. So um, now it says that you haven't got enough space on the system drive. And that's actually me. It's indicating the workbench disk. So we actually have to remove a few files from the um, workbench disk to um, get enough space to install it. Um, yeah. I'll, sh I'll show the uh, removing the first file, and then, then what I'll do is I'll put a list in the comments, so you don't, so you can actually then work on them. Uh, it's it's stuff that's not needed to, for running the system, usually speaking. So I don't think any, you'll be missing them. So we just exited to the workbench. Usually this is the way I do it. So just to take a look, so the drive is called sys or the it has a uh, synonym. what it means by the system disk so you can actually see that it's the work workbench disk. And we delete. Just looking at my notes. It doesn't actually have to be capitals, it doesn't really care. I don't have the correct key mapping, so that's why I'm messing with the wrong keys. I'm gonna have to fix that later. So that's the first file. So there's um three other files, so I'll just process them now. But the, as I said, I'll put them in the in the comments. 
so that's all the files deleted. Ah, oh, you can actually see the list here. And um, I just wanted to make a, a point that uh, what I could have done is I could have made a um, hard drive installation of the um, basic workbench system uh, by running the installer disk in, which is included in the set of uh, floppy disks for the operating system. But, um, I thought to keep this video short and more concise to the focus on Amos, so then I, I didn't do that. But obviously, then you get away from this um, uh, space problem, so you can increase to 20 megabytes or something. <laughs> the hard drives. Okay, back into the installer. <laughs> so, I see you don't get the error about the uh, not enough disk space. I mean, we're talking about some kilobytes of extra space needed to just to get this installed. So, I'll be back when this is done. So, oh, that's done, and then it needs to, we need to swap disks. see we have the compiler, the actual Amos Pro, which is the basic product, and then we have the compiler. And then that was, yeah, let's open Amos Pro here. And then it'll ask for the workbench, because it actually needs the workbench. So, I don't really know why we're always removing them, but, um, Because this is the oh this is a good example like this is what happens if you don't have the um, disk in the list of disks to be dynamically changed then you can't select it so then you have to kill the emulator and add it, add it to that list and then come back in again but no there is no workbench disk here. Copy on disk one. No. Uh, okay, I'll restart. So I can get 
get the workbench out of it. So I just wanted to show, as we see, I forgot to add the, uh, <laughs> I put all the AMOS discs in the in the change list, but not the workbench, so now I couldn't select the workbench. So now we have the um, <laughs> workbench so that we can dynamically swap to the workbench. And then I'll just um, remove that so we don't have any AMOS discs installed. Ah, is it? Uh -huh. That's a bit strange. Okay. Well, let's not have it since I already have it up there. So. Okay, that's a bit weird. So, can't you select the workbench disk to be dynamically swappable? At least in this instance. Oh! Weird, but it, it doesn't affect us now. We, we have it permanently on disk one, so in floppy disk drive ones. I'll have to look into that into that contradiction. Uh, so yes, now back to the start. So we uh, go to Amos Pro, Amos Pro. This was what I wanted to check, so we just go into the actual Amos probe. And this is kind of an installation validation. So, here we see we have 2.0 of the uh, Amos Professional. And then it was to check user this to check that this menu option exists. So this is the way I found out that um, it's to. I, I won't go into the details of how you use the compiler and stuff, but it's good. It, it, this this shows that the you have a most professional install 2.0 installed, and that the um, compiler is available from within. Um, Amos professionals. So that's done, complete. So that's how you make a um, clean installation of a Amos professional, including the Amos Pro professional compiler. And um, of course, this process you could um, do on a physical machine. So exactly following the same installation process, you should be able to install it on a physical audio if you want, or. <coughs> Alternatively, on another emulator, except for Amiga Forever 10, which, um, yeah, no idea why why that does not work when it comes to disk emulation. Uh, this time I got write errors, but I think I have actually written down a comment where I actually had um, cases where it was the emulation was failing, that it was giving read errors and stuff. So it, it could be write errors or read errors, but. Uh, something's not really correct, but with this emulator, it seems to be um, stable, so I haven't noticed any, or Amos seems to work um, relatively well on, on this platform, so anyway, and this is Windows also, so, and as I said, I, I did an installation on uh, Ubuntu Linux, and, um, and I got it to work exactly the same way as I've demonstrated here, so, so that means that one can have it on uh, use it on the Linux or on Windows uh, as a you know uh, from making a clean install and then also showed how you ba back up the system so you can actually just do experiments and then if you screw up then you can just return the uh, cop back up copy of the hard drive and then um, yeah <laughs> continue from there so anyway I hope this you found this useful I wasn't able to find such detailed instructions uh, online anywhere that I solved it, so um, yeah, enjoy.